And good morning, everybody. It is 10 in the morning on Sunday, January 22nd. And this is Unhindered by Coding. I'm Nick McPhee. And we're going to spend the next two hours working on evolution and computation in Rust, continuing the generalization of recombination and mutation that we started on Tuesday morning. Um, now, when I had left off, Boop. Uh, um, so we had implemented uniform crossover. Well, let's, let's back up a second. And let's actually look at Recombinator. So the Recombinator interface that we added. Well, hello, is it too? Always wonderful to see you. Um, so the Recombinator interface that we uh, trait that we added on Tuesday um, has a recombined method that takes self, a genome, which is a starting genome. So recombination is going to be either some kind of mutation or crossover. You're going to usually start with at least one genome, and you're going to generate a new genome from that by doing some kind of random doesn't have to be random, but usually some kind of random modifications. So we're going to take a starting genome, um, a population, and a selector. These are here so that we can get additional parents, if you want to think of it that way, um, uh, for recombinations like crossover that need multiple parents. Um, uh, thread RNG to do the randomness. And we're going to return a new genome. So that's recombined. is going to take a genome, the ability to select some additional parents as necessary, and generate a new genome. We implemented one version of that called Uniform Crossover. And I think the goal today is to implement some more of these, at least we could i'm not we could get really lost in trying to make a very really comprehensive set i don't want to do that but i want to at least have um the recombinators that were in bitstring so bitstring had um linear crossover which is actually it was a weird name it should have been uniform crossover um oh i see no no the trait linear crossover had uniform crossover and two point crossover. We've implemented uniform. We probably want to implement two point. Um, and then there was also linear mutation. So we want to have a recombinator that's mutate with rate and mutate one over length. So I, I'd be nice to implement at least those. But we had done uniform crossover. And I had one kind of annoying niggling feeling at the end of that. And I want to talk about that for a second and see if anyone's got an idea for a way to deal with this. I, it may not be easily dealable with. That wasn't really English, but whatever. Um, uh, it may not be easy to address if it's addressable at all. Um, but I figured I'd like toss it out there as a question and we'd see where we go with it. And the thing that, that was irking me a little bit is my understanding from stuff I've read, et cetera, et cetera, is that in a function declaration, you'd really rather have this be a slice and that you would return a vec so that if you have a function that's taking vector-like things and returning vector-like things, You'd like the arguments to be slices because that's more flexible. You don't need a whole vec. You can sort of point into something. Um, but it does make sense to return a vec if you're creating a new vector, which we are. This doesn't work because our recombinator trait needs this type to match that type. And here they don't. Like this is a slice and this is a vac and so they don't line up and so this doesn't, um, yeah, it says change the parameter type to match the trait. 
which we did and it works fine but it feels like this maybe ought to be th that there is an argument in some other universe for this being more more of a slice and less of a vec um but i don't see well the simple the simple thing of trying to make all of these slices doesn't work because individuals have to hold vex they can't hold slices um because or or arrays uh because we don't know the size of the array up front um uh we might have varying sizes of arrays in different runs so individual does need um oh I guess that's a uh, bit string isn't it bit string uh do, 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 do. Where is the? Uh, I'm sorry for all the scrolling. That's a bunch of tests. Here we go. EC individual holds a. Um, where is the actual struct? There we go. Oh, it's an EC dot RS. <laughs> Um, oh, so bit string must be EC individual where the genome is. Oh yeah. The genome is a bit string. There we go. And a bit string is just a, a renaming of vec of bool. Um, and so we need it to be a vec and not a, um, array. So we can't just put arrays in or slices. Um, and so the one thing that I thought of yesterday, but haven't tried, would be, but it sounds like it just would complicate things, would be to say in Recombinator, instead of saying that this is a genome, say that it is something that can be converted into a genome. No, that's not going to work because the genome's still going to be VAC. I was somehow thinking we could say it could be converted in front into a slice, but that's not making sense. Yeah, I don't think this works. I, I don't think this goes anywhere. Um, so I don't know. That just seemed a little weird to me and I didn't have any good ideas. So if anybody's got any thoughts, share. Otherwise, I think we'll just press on because this works fine. It's just feels a little mm, off to me. Okay, so um, we had in bit string because we were we had a nice list of the things that we wanted to make. Um, so linear crosshair and uniform and two point. So let's make two point. Oops, new file. Two point xo dot rs and um, this is the basic logic. So I'm going to steal that. And comment all that out so it doesn't keep trying to do things to it. So we're going to want a struct. And I think that I, yeah, just, I didn't even have brackets because there's no... Um, uh, need for them and then impl recombinator and then we'll need a lot of stuff for 2.xo and uh, actually let's steal all of this And really, we just wanted this here, and that goes away, and that goes there, and that goes away. Boom. All right. Oh, and I guess let's get rid of that to do, because I don't think, and let's get rid of it over here, because I don't think it's meaningful or helpful. So, um,. Uh, um, we are going to uh, need to implement 
recombinate uh, which I would have thought I would have gotten a little opportunity to oh why are you way over there um, hello well fine don't so I'm going to steal all this too because that's just going to be easier than um, there we go so recombine oh, and the fact that I'm doing all this copy paste doesn't make me super happy um, certainly feels like um, there is some shared something somewhere so all of this is going to copy over as well. And now we're actually going to do this part, which actually I'm going to move down below. So I can, oh, I know why nothing's uh, compiling and I'm not getting any warnings. It's because I don't have recom, I don't have this in the, um, list of mods so it doesn't know to actually attempt to compile it um, so there are people that do 1 point and 3 4 um, point crossover I think that in the field 2 is what is most used but you see one fairly often, actually. Um, there are reasons to prefer two to one. One ends up treating the endpoints. This gets a little weedy, but it treats the endpoints of the uh, vector end up being treated differently. They're less, let's see, how do we put this? Um, the endpoints of the vector will almost always come from different parents. Whereas bits in the middle could easily come from the same parent or different parents. And actually they're more likely to come from the same parent because if they were adjacent to, to come from different parents, the crossover point would have to be right between them. Um, uh, if you use two point crossover, then the probability of two booleans coming from different parents is independent of their location on the bit string and only depends on their distance from each other. Whereas with one point, it depends a lot on how the ends play out. So I think there are arguments for preferring two to one. Um, I, and, and you could, uniform crossover is sort of like n point crossover um, where n goes to the length of the um, bit string so it's really possible um, to have more than two i'm probably only going to worry about two and not try to i mean we could write a generalized n point crossover which i think is what you're suggesting um, but i'm not probably not going to mess with that right now um, but it would be entirely feasible um, so let's import a whole bunch of stuff because, you know, we got to do that. Um, do, 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 do. I wish there was like a, just like grab all the unused, the, the unresolved imports in one go. Um, but then, you know, maybe this is just telling me I shouldn't copy and paste code so much. But um, when you've got these complex traits, um, you don't really have a lot of choices. Um, okay, so there's that. Now, so this assertion matches up with this assertion. Um, so we're going to, let's do our points. Let mute first equals range gen range zero dot dot. Uh, oh, I actually 
yln and let mute second equals range gen range zero dot dot len. And I just want these to be in the same order. Um, I mean, in the sort of small first and big second. And so I did this. I don't know if there's like a niftier trick for this. Um, but it works. Um, yeah. So, and then I want, um, so the genome, yeah. So, so I cloned here the genome coming in and I need that because actually, do I need that here? Um, I don't know. I don't remember what the semantics of clone from slice is. Let's try it without it and see what happens. Um, genome first, second dot clone from slice. Um, second genome. Oops. First dot dot second. semicolon and then return genome and uh, yeah I need to pull in rand here so I have gen range and actually this gen range is very nice I like that and the clone from slice is super shiny um, the ability to copy the elements from one place into another in a specified location in the slice. That was actually a really neat discovery. I liked that a lot. Um, and why are you grumpy now? Oh, this is a reference. Gotcha. Um, well, what is this? Okay, hang on. So this does destructively, oh yeah, this destructively modifies this genome and that's not desirable. So we actually really want to let genome equals genome.clone. And then, and then it needs to be mute. So what, actually, why was that even, okay, hang on. Why does that even compile? Because this needs to be mutable. Genome is not mutable. The slice out of genome? How is that mutable? I don't really understand that. I wouldn't have thought, since genome is a reference to a vector that isn't ever said to be mutable how does this even work i would have thought that the compiler would have prevented us from passing a mutable reference obviously something ha happens with the slice that allows the so is a slice mutable Rust slice mutable. That is probably not. This is probably more what we want. Um, A dynamically sized view into a contiguous sequence. Slices are either mutable or shared. The shared slice type is ampersand, while the mutable is ampersand mute. So I don't really understand why this is possibly... Um, 
mutable doesn't really make sense now oh hang on so maybe that other no so does this compile does this run it's a million dollar question No. Oh, it doesn't even compile. Genome is a reference. The data cannot be borrowed as mutable. Exactly what I was expecting. Weird. But somehow in VS Code, we're happy. I don't know. VS Code is being strange. Well, it's nice to know that my intuition was right. Um, so we do need to do that. Um... And so we need to clone that. And then do we need the star anymore? I think we don't. Car, oops. Cargo build. Yada dee dee. Okay. So it builds. Okay. So that works. Um, and this clone is a little, I mean, I think the clone's necessary and good. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, I want to think about especially potentially expensive clones. Um, uh, and that is a potentially expensive clone because we're cloning an entire vector, but we need a new vec because we're going to return an entirely new vec. And so that vec's got to come from somewhere. And the clone here makes that vec and sets up on average half of the contents um, that we will return in the end. Um, and then we do the clone from slice to uh, plop in the bits from the second genome and return and we should be good. So that's cool. Um, now I feel like were there some um, tests for these things? No, there are not any tests for these things, I don't think. Oh yeah, there are. Um, not great tests, and they're actually just tests for the mutation. So I'll move them into the mutation side of things when we get there. Um, but uh, that, I think, does the right thing for two point crossover. So we're going to call that a happy thing. And then we ought to be able to now, uh, where, uh, that one currently takes, um, uniform XO dot recombine and we could change that with two point XO and it would in theory still run and it would just use two point crossover instead of uniform crossover. However, something didn't work. Um, uh -uh. Oh, I probably need to import something. Oh, uh, we're not. Actually, is it 2.xo or is it xo caps? But we are going to have to import something somewhere. So, 2. Point XO colon colon two point XO. Let's get rid of you so we have a little more room. In theory, we should be okay. Not in practice. No two point XO in. Oh, it is little o. Well, okay, fine. Actually, let me 
actually confirm that. Yeah, it is a little low. Okay. Probably should be consistent. I think uniform. I called it big O, and it probably should be cross over. So it's actually, well, it's one word um, in English. So let's rename that. Re Hello. That's weird. It doesn't say rename, it says change all occurrences. Oop. Well, that didn't work. Uh, uh, uh. That's like, I think, uh, I'm going to reload the developer window because I think it is. Yeah, Rust Analyzer seems hopelessly confused. Um, not sure where I broke it, but uh, I definitely broke it. Um, so now, can we rename? Uh, rename symbol. Hello. Thinking hard. Still thinking hard. There we go. Thinking hard some more. There we go. And now this isn't compiling. Uh, oh, it's inaccessible. I need that to be a pub. I also got a bunch of not put pub. So that was a problem and consider importing it. I thought I did. Okay. Yeah. I changed the name. And so got all confused. Okay. So now I think it compiles, and now I hope it runs. And it does, and it works. Yay! Um, yeah. So cool. So that um, two point crossover seems to be a happy thing. Um, Let's actually put this back to be what we had it as before. Where was that? There we go. Uh, oh, it, it, it is two point. And so it is now correct. Um, so let's commit that. Um, so that's just fixing that, which was off anyway. Oh, we still got that commented out code in 2.xo. Uh, let's get rid of that. Ah! Scrolling madly. And then this should then be... Oh, that's just renaming. Um, so let's make that its own. Re, uh, lowercase o in uniform xo. Um, uh, xo should stand for a single word crossover, so it probably makes more sense. For the snake case, oh, actually the camel case in this case, camel case to be uniform XO. Boom. And that's moving that into there and out of here. Oh, I didn't remove it. Actually, I should remove it. Um, so bit string. Well, I guess I haven't actually removed. Uniform either. 
So I will eventually want to remove these, but let's actually put the other ones in first and then we'll come back and remove these. Um, okay, so I'm going to say implement 2.0 uh, XO recombinator. This uh, moves the two point crossover logic into its own recombinator. Beyond. Um, okay. Now, now actually, let's see if we can get rid of linear crossover and its impulse. If I lose those, what breaks? It's bound to be stuff that assumed that, that was going to be there. Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe because I've changed the reference to it to be the new recombinator, maybe there's nothing there. Cargo build. Ah, well, maybe. Do we run? Yeah, we do. Cool. Um, I should actually probably format. I don't know if that changed anything. Uh, this will tell us. Nope, it did not. And I want to run Clippy. Cargo Clippy to see if there's anything other than the uh, pipe stuff that. Um, oh, so we've got an unused import in 2.xo. What? Oh, that. Oh, and that's, yeah, okay. I mean, this will probably go away eventually anyway, but there we go. Um, score is never in a pipeline. That's okay. Pipeline's not done. Consider adding a semicolon on line 31 of 2.xo. Um, okay, I'll do that. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, and that's just pipeline. Okay, cool. Um, then, uh, so that got rid of that. That just cleaned up some stuff, and that just cleaned up some stuff. So I think we'll just throw all these in, remove linear crossover trait. Um, the linear crossover trait and its implementation in bitstring.rs. Oops, can't spell bit string isn't needed anymore. So I'm making it go away. Boom. Okay. Now let's quick do the two mutations in bit string and then I think we'll be done with this. So there's mutate with a fixed rate and mutate with one over length. Well, actually, no, before I do that, I want to look at um, open no, split rate. That's what I want. So I'm trying to think, if is there some way that I could reduce the boilerplate business here? Um, oh, that's still, that's why they look identical. They actually are. Um, so these differ in... These two parts would be here. But the 
like put adding structure like you could factor this part out but proportionally this isn't this big a, that big a deal i don't know it's probably not really worth it um and i wonder if really the right answer is um if this is a place where a macro would actually make sense because then we could with the right macro we could possibly just provide like the highlighted piece and the macro fills in like all of this and that's the part you know i mean that that's two-thirds of the code but half the code is just the signature which there's no way with refactoring to make that go away, but you could possibly make it go away with a, uh, a macro. Um, so maybe there's a macro to be written in the re... I guess in the recombinator. Um, unless I put these two together in a crossover sub-module instead of in two separate modules and then have a macro in that crossover module that they both borrow use so that might be a possibility um uh i'm gonna make a note of it but not deal with it um Should I create a macro? I've never actually written a meaningful macro in Rust, so this would be uh, a something where I probably should do some homework before I flail on the internet. Um, and but would be good practice, um, so it might be kind of interesting. Um, that, for example, um, reduces the boilerplate in implementations of recombinator for example um, the roughly two-thirds of the two crossover implementations that are identical boom okay so let's go with that and we'll not deal with trying to um, macro macro eight um, macro eyes uh, macro stuff that at the moment so let's do these two mutations um so recombinator is going to need pub mod um what did i call them i called them mutate with rate and mutate one over length mutate with rate pub mod mutate with one over length and so like a quick fix that will actually make those oh that's very nice um and this will presumably do the same thing that's kind of cool. Um, so now, uh, mutate with rate is the one to do first because the other one depends on it. Um, struct, mutate with rate. Ah, now this actually is going to have a field because we store the am I right about that? No, it's just taking the mutation rate as an argument. But we could make it Oh, hey Wagafa, wonderful to see you. No worries about being late to the party. Um life is complicated and things happen. We're glad to have you while we have you. So we're working on the evolution computation system and <clears throat> uh, last Tuesday we added this recombinator trait um, with a single recombine method 
Um, so this is to cover things like crossover and mutation. Um, <coughs> uh, so it takes a genome, which is the, the starting point. Like right now we're working on mutation, so this would be the genome we would be mutating. Um, it takes a population and a selector in case we want to get other individuals to act as second and third and fourth parents um, for mutation. We won't ever need that. So those will be underscores um, on the mutation. And then the random number generator. And then we return a genome, a newly constructed genome. Um, and so we're working on the mutations um, for that. Um, and so, did I lose it? Oh, there it is. There it is. Um, and we could, hmm. So when I first implemented these in bit string in a less general way, mutate with rate. So the, the rate here is the odds of mutating a single bit in the bit string. Um, I just passed the mutation rate in as an argument. Um, we could, now that we have, well, actually we could have done it before. Um, no, actually we couldn't have done it before easily because it would have been cooked into bit string. Now that we have this as a standalone piece, we can actually provide the mutation rate when we construct the um, mutate with rate and it can hold that because we have a struct that is the um, recombinator. So instead of passing around as an argument over and over and over again, we can just pass it in once when we construct it, which actually is kind of nice. I think that'll be an improvement. Um, what did I call it? I called it mutation rate. Well, let's just do that then. Um, mutation rate. And I think I said it was an F32. That, that was sort of an arbitrary choice. Um, I think that, um, it could be whatever, um, it could certainly be an F64, but, um, I think realistically we don't, we almost certainly don't need 32 bits of precision for the mutation rate. I doubt anybody is using sort of mutation rates at that level of precision, uh, we could probably get away with, I don't know what the smallest F is. Um, F, oh, doesn't look like there's anything smaller. Um, so F32 is probably as good as it gets um, for us. But, so we'll have that, that'll be nice. And then Impl, oh, actually, I'm totally going to just copy all that because it's so gross. Um, so we want to Impl all of this. And actually, I want to copy everything down to here. Um, and this is, I do sort of feel like um, there's a, um, a macro to be written somewhere here uh, to simplify grabbing all this or copying all this stuff. Um, combinator. Hello. Oh, save population. Save individual. Save selector. Save threadinge. Save and then to do finger. Okay, so all that now compiles. No problem. I I understand the need for a cup of tea. Just finished mine, and it was kind of cold. Oh well. Um, 
And unfortunately, I can't just snap my fingers and make another cup of tea come. So we'll just muddle through for another hour and 15 minutes. Um, okay, so let's bit string. Um, let's just grab this. What, 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 where am I going? Here we go, mutate with rate. Okay, so we're not self.iter, we're genome dot iter. And I think all of that needs to scoot over. So we're mapping across the genome and we are generating, so for each bit, we flip a coin. Uh, ah, here, this should be self dot mutation rate. And aha, it's not T's anymore. Ah, this is interesting. Okay. So if we, ah, oh. so if we're going to use bang, this has to be a vec of bool and not a vec of t. Um, if we allowed, we could create like a mutable trait that would generalize this notion and say this needs to be vec of t where t implements mutable and when we get to ev genetic programming where the vectors will be vectors of instructions and not vectors of booleans we will need something more uh, general, but we don't need to wrestle with it now. I think right for now, we'll leave it alone. And you said use the not trait. I don't think I know. Rust not trait. Um, oh, which gives you the ability to do negation. So we can say T implements not. Um, and then as long as T is essentially a binary thing, um, then, oh, that's, oops, except for we've got to import it probably. Now, oh, why are we grumpy here? Well, I bet I need to import something to be able to call Jen. Yeah, I do. Hello, Gotha. Glad to have you back. Um, so yeah, this is going to need to be generalized, but I'm going to push that off until we absolutely have to do it. Um, oh, that's interesting. Uh, so not returns the output type and it doesn't know unless I tell it, which is telling me how to do right here, that uh, the output type is T. So not really quite Joe general. Um, so let's see, your code has a mutator field in the struct. Mutator field. So uh, that's basically a function that knows how to mutate things of type T. And so when you construct the mutate um, thing, you hand it that mutator. Oh, that's an interesting idea. And then actually mutate with rate and mutate with one over differ in the mutator you pass in, not in the 
So this just becomes kind of a mutator um, type. Hmm. That actually is kind of nice. And maybe more easily generalizable. So I think I like that idea. Let's, uh, I want to figure out what, why did this blow up? Um, is that just because I've got the to do here? Let me make that go away just in case that's all that's happening. Oh yeah, that was all that was happening. And then this would be underscore and this would be underscore because we don't use either of them. And we're grumpy still cannot use move out of bit, which is, oh, doesn't know it's Boolean anymore. So we actually have to clone the bits as we copy them over. That's interesting. Okay, well, that's a thing. I bet I have to do something like that. Oh no, I probably need to dereference and then clone? No. Yeah. T cannot be dereferenced. Uh, do I just need to clone? Oh, I just needed to clone. And then this is probably just clone as well. And I wonder if I need those prints. Probably not. There we go. Okay. So that, I think, works. And I've got a test, pretty bad one, I think, over here that maybe I should copy over. Um... Yeah, um, so I could grab this and add this to this guy. So we have some kind of Somehow I ended up over one too far. And let's take the ignore out. Well, actually we can leave the ignore in because we just run it from inside. Um, okay, so what am I doing here in the test? I'm getting a random number generator. I'm getting a number of bits. Make random needs for that to work. We need to, imp oh, come on, let, let go. Need to import something uh, I didn't want mutate one of a length I want well we'll get there in a second um, so actually this is going we need to construct a um, mutator uh, so let mutate or be mutate with rate Mutation rate um, O point O well say O five. Um, and then this is going to be mutator dot Recombine parent bits and oh yeah we actually have to pass in a population and a selector and I don't really want to have those 
this was like Java, I just pass in null there. But we actually have to have something. Oh, that's annoying. Um, so, and I can't, I can't do something like that. Ah, like there's just no way that makes sense, right? Recombinate helps if I spell. No, actually, why are you grumpy? Mutate with rate. Recombine. Recombinate? There we go. Did I just get the... Recombine is going to take self, the genome, that's a reference to a genome. So I think that's that problem. Yeah, and you can't you can't do that. Uh, that's what I figured. So we're gonna have to actually make a population. Uh oh, but population's just a trait. So we could Presumably, um, struct p population like that. No, so it's just struct p. And then impl population for p. And then there's just going to be a whole lot of noise about that. Um, well, but actually, since we're never going to do anything with any of it, having it be to do isn't terrible. Um, and this type could be whatever I want because we're never going to do anything with it. Um, can I get away? Is that a type? It is. Yeah, that's a type. Okay. Um, and in fact, then we don't need any of that. And then we could do the same kind of thing for impulse selector for s wanna 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 um we can leave that to do there because we don't care uh oh but Oh, it needs a generic. Uh, so it needs a type P. And P needs to be of type population. What a what a what a what a what Where is the type population or implements trait population and that gives me kind of a minimalist so you're saying is it not implemented on vec Is that, are, is the it in that sentence population or selector? Because I think I got ahead of you. Um, uh, 
are you essentially saying we could put a vec t here um i'm not sh the population so that we could just use a vec everywhere where population is being used instead of actually specifying the p or the this struct p maybe uh, uh population uh So we do implement population for VEC. Yeah, you're right. So we could, probably. So we could probably get rid of this thing. Comment that out for a hot sec. And this could just be a VEC new. Um, but it needs to know what type of things. It's probably a type problem. Um, oh no, it's just an ampersand at the moment. Oh, that's cool. And then selector, I guess maybe I should check and make sure there's not, is there, not, is there something obvious that selector is implemented by? I think the answer is no. No, so I may still want the sort of fake selector um, but then P is going to need to just be, um, so I don't need some, uh, I can think I can get away with VEC, maybe that? No, I need a thing. Yeah, so VEC bit string, we can do that. Um, and then I don't need the where, and this is vec bit string, and this is just going to be bit string. Yes. Okay. Then we just need to make an S. Uh, and it's going to be a reference. Well, actually, why don't we let... Um, placeholder population be back new let placeholder selector be s do -ba do and then we'll put ampersand yeah, ampersand placeholder population there and Ampersand placeholder selector there. And that didn't like something. The trait bound. Vec bool individual. Oh, so vec bool doesn't implement individual. Ah, uh, so I can't just make this be a um, this can't just be a vec bit string. That has to be like an EC individual or something. Um, what 
Well, I've got a thing that does that. East. EC. So EC individual would have to be. Ugh, this is getting really ugly for just writing a, a simple test. Um, actually, I wonder if. Um, oh, good. Yeah, you're right. I don't need the curly braces. Oops. Ah. Um, ugh, 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 ugh. <coughs> um, So this has to be EC individual. Oh, they take a genome. Ah! I also wonder if it would be easier to go back to having... Yeah, so, okay. Let's stop for a second and talk about that. So you say you don't have, where did recombinant go? There we go. So you don't take populations and selectors here. How do you then handle the, the cases where you need another parent? Um, cause this was one way to think about it, but you could imagine a number of other possibilities. And this is certainly looking gross. Um, it seemed like it was a nice idea at the time, but maybe it's not a great idea. Um, cause there has to be something Okay, you pass in a fixed length array of parents. So, yeah. Um, so instead of a single genome here, you would have an array of genomes. And if it's a crossover, you would have an array of two genomes. And if it's a mutation, you'd have an array of one genome. And then you're responsible for doing all the selecting out where you use the thing that probably makes more sense because having this depend on the population of the selector probably is not good <clears throat> um, okay i think i'm convinced that that's a reasonable thing to do um well, let me look at where are we here um, what have we done? That's just adding those guys. This was hacking around. Okay, so I don't need to commit anything to save what we've got. Um, so this would be genomes. <coughs> and it would be a an array of genome and we get rid of these two things here okay now next let me comment out all this noise so that we know what actually isn't compiling and that it's not all this test nonsense um, so uniform crossover now doesn't work because it takes population selector. This is going to be, uh, an 
an array of references to vectors. The size can be not known. You could also use tuples. Yeah, no, I think I can see that arrays would be easier with iterators. And does require const generics to use arrays. I'm not sure I understand that part. Um, Rust const generics. Uh, are generic arguments that range over constant values rather than the types or lifetimes. This allows types to be parameterized by integers. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So we have to have n so the our so this array is actually going to have so in your thing this had an, a fixed size n um that would be like that and then we would have uh we don't need p and s anymore num parents oh and i guess that had it was const n u size and that goes away and that goes away and that goes away oh and i bet i could say const num parents u size here and just uh, leave this part out there or not uh, expected an open curly brace a lifetime or a type Does it not let me have const there? So maybe I do have to, ooh, well maybe the problem is that I have this. <coughs> oh, and recombinator is gonna need to not have those either. None of that needs to be there. <coughs> Uh, oh, it, but it is. Uh, at least individuals going to have to be there. So it's going to, well, actually really just genome. Um, G. Oh, I don't think I have a genome. Right? So really it's just G. And then there's not a where. So this is going to be a reference to a genome or G. And this is going to have to have the num parents thing. Uh, const num parents u size and g and then this is going to return a g well nothing else it makes this whole those long types were gross and makes those go away 
So maybe this whole macro business will become less of an issue. Okay, so that compiles now. This needs to be G is let's see what we're doing. Uh, so do I just say like two here? Can we still use the constant generics though? I mean, there's nothing, at least I don't have a problem with uniform crossover specifying that it takes two parents. I think that that's entirely reasonable. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is genomes and uh, so just to keep it simple, let genome be genomes zero and let second genome be genomes one. And now in theory, the rest of that's the same. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of nifty, actually. And I like this being able to say that the recombinator takes two. So when we know it, I mean, I guess where it would be a problem is if we didn't know, if we wanted to be flexible about how many um, genomes a recombinator took, um, this would be a problem uh, because we have to spend... So if I'm understanding things by declaring this to be a const, we have to specify it in any implementation. We can't leave it open. Um, whereas if we don't specify it um, as const here, then we could leave this as open. This becomes just an array. Um, and we could have operators that take an arbitrary number of genomes and do something with them, which I could imagine somebody wanting to do. Um, maybe. Um, I think I'm going to like roll with this for now, but I am going to leave a comment. Um, forces us to decide a fixed number of parent genomes at compile time. So we won't be able to implement this trait for a recombinator that takes an arbitrary number of parent genomes. That might be a problem later, but we'll deal with that if, when it comes up. Okay. So that then, this goes away and then Two point crossover, we're going to have the same. Uh, actually, let's grab just this part. And population and selector go away. And population and selector go away. And genome becomes an array of two references 
and then we can steal this same top uh, genomes plural yeah okay uh, so that takes care of those two and they now compile mutation with rate is still a mess oh no actually it's not that much of a mess because um, I think I can just oops no wrong thing to paste um, I just wanted this part this is going to take a single parent um, and now we will not have population or selector so we don't have those guys and we get rid of the it not using those two um, um, arguments that's always a win uh, why are we grumpy here oh uh, because the genome is actually we want genome zero so we iterate yeah okay there we go that's better um, and so that all compiles let us confirm that cargo build it compiles right these are all just warnings no 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 uh to oh we're yeah where we use it uh so that's in two point exo mutate line 36 uh yep right there where we call it we're passing in too much stuff um and we're not setting up the genomes correctly uh so we don't need population or selector anymore um I'm not sure I'm understanding that comment. Um, so you're thinking like here when we impl, we could have this have another const. Yeah, okay. So if we needed something that took an arbitrary number of things, we could Although we still would have to spec, ultimately we still have to specify in at compile time, right? That's what it means for it to be constant. So if we had something that sometimes was going to get two and sometimes we get four, that's not going to work here, I think. Um, but if we, if it always takes the same number, then yes, what you said could totally work. Um, Okay, so let's see. Recombine takes a vector of genomes, and this is going to take. So this is going to take two genomes. So we need to select two parents. Um, let second parent equals selector dot select range population dupe. And so then the genomes, let parent genomes be an array of first parent dot genome, comma, second parent dot genome. And they'll, those I think are going to need to be references, parent genomes. Oh no, they're already references. Okay. So when we, that's right, when we get, oh no. Genome return to reference. Okay. Cool. 
So that does what we want. Um, sorry about that noise. Had to move the monitor. The sun is swinging around. It's a beautiful day. We had intense frost this morning. Um, and everything's all covered in frost. Um, and the sky is clearing up and the sun's coming out. So my monitor was getting all like uh, glary on me. Okay, so that takes care of that problem. Um, oh, and I guess we don't need initial genome anymore. That's telling me something. Um, okay. Now do we compile cargo build? And we do. Cargo run. And we run. We successfully find a bunch of zeros. So that's cool. Um, let me commit that, because that's a pretty big change to the world. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to make a um, in recombinator um, note this became a lot less gross when we uh, switched oh, I cannot spell to an array of genomes instead of passing in the population and selector. So it may not as big a deal. <coughs> oh, that's true. Clippy is not happy. Maybe we should deal with that cargo clippy before we commit um, a bunch of imports in recombinator yep look at that basically all the imports wow that's an interesting sign so we now went from being dependent on basically all the major parts of the system to being not dependent on anything anymore which is just bound to be a good sign uh, yeah, that, uh, that yeah. Bad um, and again, a whole bunch of, uh, so this is in uniform and two point and mutate with rate are all going to have the same thing. Again, a bunch of dependencies that we don't, we don't need. That's almost certainly a good sign. Yeah. Uh, that's pipeline stuff. Num parent should have an upper. Oh, yeah, sure. So recombinator line 13. Yeah, that should have the name num underscore parents. Uh, uh, num parents. And then we don't use that name anywhere else because everywhere else we just put in constant values. And it doesn't like pipeline. That's fine. We didn't want it to like pipeline anyway. So thank you for the catch about Clippy. Uh, so recombinator. Whoops. Um, so we basically took the um, population and selector and replaced it with uh, an array, fixed size array of genomes, and then everything else is just dealing with that change. Except for that, so I will not commit that right now. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that, that is dealing with that change. That is the change that we're not going to deal with now. That is dealing with that change. That is dealing with that change. Okay. So change recombinator. 
All right, let's say remove dependencies in recombinator on population and selector. Um, instead of having recom recombine, use the population and selector to get additional parents as needed. This now takes a fixed length array of genomes and does the appropriate recombination. This removes a lot of dependencies and should simplify the code considerably. The use of const tra tra um, uh, generic might be an issue later if we want a recombinator that can act on an arbitrary number of genomes, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. zippity doo -dah. And so then we have this. Let's see if we can get the tests to pass. Now that we don't, whoop, ah. Now that we don't have all those dependencies that we used to have. Um, a lot of that's going to go away in a second. All of this goes away because we don't need those anymore. Which means we don't need population selector or EC individual. None of those should need to be a thing for us. And we're mutating, so the parent bits just need to be put in an array. And we get rid of the placeholder population and placeholder selector. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. And these two guys go away. Yeah, so the fact that I had those long arguments, um, hmm, well, that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I think one of the strengths of Rust is clearly that the type checker can, if you let it, the type checker can help you a lot. And by specifying that mutate with rate takes a single genome, we're allowing the type checker to assist us more aggressively than if we said that was just a vec. I suspect... Um, Oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and a lot of people do return multiple outputs. Um, that is not an uncommon thing. Um, I tend not to do that. Um, but that's a personal choice and there will be other people out in the world that would want to return to. Now, I don't know that I would... When you take owned inputs, do you have to then clone them in case the same parent is going to be used more than once? Or do you ensure that the same parent is only ever used once? 
because certainly in our with lexic case selection, it's very common that the same individual will be a parent many, many times. And so you would have to clone that parent if it takes an owned input, um, which is entirely doable, but you'd have to do that um, if you're going to allow for the same individual to be uh, a parent more than once. Uh, yes. So if they get cloned, so if yours, because I don't, th I don't think ours clone coming out of the selector. I don't think. Um, here, let's look at random. Yeah, so it just returns a reference to that parent. So there's no clone there. Um, and so it would ha if it came in as an owned, it would have to get cloned somewhere, which is not inherently bad. I mean, you got to clone somewhere. Um, I don't clone the individuals. I just clone the genomes when I need them. But um, you got to clone something somewhere. Um, I think I wouldn't, in general, well, no, I guess I don't care. Yeah, I don't know that I care a lot, um, to be honest with you. Um, I don't think it makes a huge difference. Um, so then, zip probably just needs an import, right? Oh, come on. Uh, I bet I'm just this. Uh, and then we're good. Get rid of bit string. We never refer to it. And so does this test pass? Yeah, that's a happy thing. Okay. So I think that that makes me happy on that front. And, oh, let me format. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I think that's nice. Uh, it seems to work. And then I guess we need to change this to actually use it. Um, so this would become uh, mutate with rate. Oh, I bet, oops, undo. I bet that mutate with rate probably there's something that isn't pub. Yep. So we can't find it. Now we ought to be able to mutate with rate dot recombine and that's going to take the array of genomes and the random number generator <coughs> um Oh, did I? 
Oh, yeah, mutate with rate takes... I have to construct one. Um, which is a little gross here. Maybe two point exo mutate ought to hold the mutators so we don't have to keep constructing them. But then, well, let's go ahead and construct it first and then we'll tidy that up maybe in a little bit. Um, let, hey, thanks for joining. Oh, a, a raid. Welcome to the party. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, great to have you here. We are, so to catch you up, we are working on an evolutionary computation system in Rust. And um, so we're evolving at the moment just vectors of Booleans um, to satisfy some target function. Uh, the plan soon, hopefully, although I've been saying that for two months, is to get to evolving computer programs instead of just uh, bit strings. Um, and what we've been doing for the past many sessions is trying to generalize. There was a lot of uh, logic that was just kind of smashed in and we're trying to generalize that logic um, using traits um, and all this is being done in Rust um, uh, and judging from your cool little waving crab icon, I'm guessing that's a thing you like. Um, and so uh, we're using traits to provide more abstract and general implementations of a variety of things. We're currently working on uh, a recombination, recombinator trait. Let's see, there's the trait. Um, so a recombinator uh, takes uh, has a single method recombine that takes an array of references to genomes. So the G generic here is genome. Um, <laughs> wonderful. Glad to have you here. Um, uh, and then we specify how many parents that recombinator has. So if it's a mutation operator, it probably has one parent. If it's a crossover operator, it takes two genomes and recombines them. Um, and a random number generator and generates a new um, genome. Um, and we have some implementations of that for uniform crossover, two-point crossover, and mutation with rate. And I'm currently... Um, so this is a kind of a gross type, frankly, um, that I think will go away when we get pipeline working. Uh, but this was one of the initial hacked up types that we're trying to like clean out um, uh, that performs uh, two point crossover followed by mutation and um, I'm changing things so that it now uses the new version of the recombinators instead of the old setup um, so I've got to create a um, mutate um mutate with rate and I'm gonna um, for the moment I will just hack in uh, oh I'm just gonna hack in a number for now because we need to make all this go away anyway um, soon um, oh and that should be mutation rate mutation rate colon and that's Good. And then this becomes mutator. Um, and uh, oh, this was the parent genomes. What? I can't. No, that's right. It's the exogenome. So why are we grumpy here? Um, oh, it's a reference. So we want to pass a reference here. And it doesn't like this. Why does it not like this? Uh, oh, because I made uh, the fields currently private. 
And I'm assigning it over here. Do I want to actually make a new? Or am I happy just doing this? Do, 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 do. Don't know. Mutate with rate. Do I care? Um, let's just put that there now. This all compiles now. So it's a comment from a while ago that I never got to. So this has the recombination, so you have an intermediate from the first that you clone from the second, yes. Um, and one thing this doesn't do is give me a way to chain these cleanly. So recombine, because it acts the um, the main actor is the recombinator and not the genome, we can't say blah dot recombine dot, well, dot 2.xo dot mutate with rate, which is sort of what the, it'd be nice if this looked more like um, new genome B parent genomes dot two point XO RNG dot mutate with rate RNG something like that. Um, but uh, that would require implementing things on arrays. And I don't know how simple that would be. Oh, then I never, I never think about then. Rust then. Uh... No, let's see, I don't need, I don't want that. Um, I actually just want then. Come on. Um, and I don't want a future. Um, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Well, and that's where I'm headed with the pipeline. So maybe I don't care about this. Yeah, yeah I probably don't care about this. I think I'm, um, I'm getting ahead of myself because my vision for the pipeline is that you would create a pipeline by providing a sequence of um, chainable recombinators. Oh, and you know, that may require that we go from fixed length arrays to VEX because in the pipeline, I want to be able to take a sequence of recombinators and have the output of one become the input to the next one. But I'm not going to, the type checker, since they'll be like, it'll be like a vector of, of recombinators, they'd all have to have the same type. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That is going to be an issue. So in pipeline, I want a vector of recombinators that are all going to take, and they'll all have to have the same type to go in the recombinator, in the vector. And here, if I'm understanding things correctly, different numbers here make different types and so I'm not going to be able to have a VEC that has uh, a crossover followed by a mutation because they're not going to have the same type and whereas if this was a VEC of references to genomes then everybody's got the same type um, I just have the genome type G. 
And I can even get fancy and have an input type and an output type. I mean, right now I'm assuming that every recombinator returns a thing of the same type as it got, which isn't guaranteed. I mean, I think in all the stuff we're likely to do, the output type is the same as the input type, but I could imagine somebody wanting to go from one kind of type to another. Um, and uh, in which case you'd want, uh, instead of a single type here, you'd want multiple types. So I do think we're going to have to make this change. Ah, that's annoying. Um, let's actually finish this business. Oh, I think we have finished this business. This looks like this works. Um, let's finish this. Compile, compile and commit. Cargo build. And then we'll come back and fix. Ooh, nope. Method not found. Oh, that's because I've had that funky line in there. Um, get rid of my funky line. That was never going to be a working thing anyway. Da 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 Cargo run. And it seems... Oh, hey! It does not work. We did not get a solution. Something isn't good. Because we should have gotten a solution. Um... Hmm. Why did we not get a solution? Let me actually, I want to look at what exactly we've changed. Okay, that we did. This is unchanged. What have we changed here? Uh... So, oh, this is just adding some imports. So that's not interesting. I wonder if hacking that mutation rate in got us in trouble. Because that seems to be the one thing I did. Um, what is my... So maybe I, if I make that 0 0.01, oh, I can't edit there. What am I doing? Um, aha. So I my my mutate. Oh, we still actually. So we were perfect, and we got off by one. Um, oh, we weren't perfect. We actually had a one over here too. I think I had my mutation rate was too high. Um, and um, so I think that's why that didn't work. So I think that's actually probably good. Pro problem with stochastic, evolution computation systems are really stochastic. And man, it's, it's very hard to know if you're doing the right thing because almost anything you do is at least interesting. Um, and so, and it's hard to specify, even statistically, it's not trivial to specify what the desired or expected output is. Um, and and uh, it's, uh, whoa, go away. Um, th that much harder um, if you have, um, Yeah, I, I'm babbling. Um, so I think we'll commit this, and then I think we should probably go back and re... Well, let's do... what? To, oh, it's almost time. Um, maybe we should just uh, wrap this up with a great big to-do um, on the recombinator, because that's got to be fixed, I think, or we're going to have a huge problem. Um uh to do in fact 
we ha I think we have to convert genomes from a fixed size array to a vec of G because otherwise um, recombinators won't have the same type and we won't be able to I said they won't have the same type if they have a different number of parent genomes and we won't be able to put a bunch of them in a vec when we implement pipeline. Okay, so I think that's got to be dealt with um, when we return to this. So, um, let's see, it is Sunday. We will return to this on Tuesday, 10 to noon, more EC fun. Um, and then Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m. and Saturday uh, 2 to 4 p.m. we're working on uh, advent of code exercises. So we did day one and day two uh, earlier this week. Um, and so we'll pick up with day three on uh, Wednesday night. Um, and that should be fun and exciting. Um, so thank you all for your hope, your help, your thoughts. Um, Moscow Bish, thank you so much for bringing uh, a group of viewers over. I really appreciate that. And actually, is there anything happening? Anybody going that we should be, um, we should go raid. And I don't see anybody who's currently on my list. So um, I will not be sending you all somewhere, but I am starting to try to think about it. Um, and if you know somebody uh, that um, you think it would make sense for us to go raid, um, definitely let me know, um, either here in the chat or um whisper me on Twitch. Um, uh, I know of a few Rust programmers um, in Twitch. I don't know of anybody doing evolutionary computation work, um, which would be kind of interesting. Or I guess if somebody was doing advent of code, that would be potentially interesting. Um, uh, but I don't see anybody, none of the people on my list are online at the moment. So we will wander off. Uh, and do other things on our fine Sunday as the sun comes out here. So thank you again. You're awesome human beings. Appreciate the feedback and the suggestions. Uh, we will get this recombination working. Um, and I will talk to everybody later. Ciao!